Everyone was stunned by a photo from the Chernobyl forest that appeared online. The drone had captured an incredible find. Eric Quinn was flying his drone over the Chernobyl forest to monitor the returning wildlife when he heard a strange, unsettling noise through the drone's audio feed as the drone hovered. The noise grew louder, an eerie crying sound he had never heard before. Intrigued, Eric zoomed in the camera to find out where the noise was coming from. What he discovered was so shocking that it quickly amazed everyone online. Eric Quinn is an ecologist from the University of Sheffield passionate about wildlife recovery in areas damaged by human activities. For the past five years, he has been focusing on the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone, an area made uninhabitable by a nuclear disaster in 1986. Despite the disaster, this region had become a surprising spot for scientists studying how nature rebounds without human interference. Every visit Eric made to Chernobyl allowed him to gather data and see how life was coming back. The zone was full of life, from wolves roaming the forest to rare birds nesting in abandoned buildings. Using advanced technology like drones with cameras and sensors, Eric tracked animal movements and changes in the environment. His work was essential for understanding how ecosystems recover from major disruptions, but today, something completely unexpected happened that would captivate the world's attention. As the drone hovered above the dense forest, Eric observed the usual suspects through his monitor, deer, wild boars, even a lone wolf. But then on the edge of the monitor, Eric saw something odd. A little smudge, a strange, unidentifiable shape, and a small clearing that made his heart skip a beat. It didn't look human or animal, it was something else entirely, or so it seemed. As Eric directed the drone toward this strange shape, he began to hear a strange mewing sound. The crying noise grew louder the closer the drone got. At first, Eric couldn't tell where it was coming from. He adjusted the drone's audio settings to capture the sound better. The crying was clear now, and it was the sound of distress. Eric felt a tight knot in his stomach when he realized the noise wasn't from a machine, it was a creature in trouble. He focused his drone camera on the shape he had spotted and zoomed in to his shock. It was a young bear cub stuck in an old rusty trap. The cub was struggling to free itself but couldn't escape. It looked scared and alone with its fur tangled in the middle. Eric's heart sank. He wanted to help but going into the Chernobyl exclusion zone was very risky. There were still radioactive hotspots, and the environment was dense and unpredictable. Even with safety gear, it was dangerous. Despite the risks, Eric knew he couldn't leave the cub to suffer. The cub's fearful eyes filled him with urgency. He couldn't directly help, so he continued to monitor the situation with his drone and called for professional help. He contacted the Chernobyl Wildlife Management Team, who had the right equipment and training for this kind of rescue. They promised to arrive quickly. While Eric kept watching through his drone, he noticed rustling in the underbrush, zooming in. He saw the cub's mother arriving, looking worried. She tried to use her paws to open the trap, but it was too strong and stuck in the ground. Each attempt made the cub whimper, adding to the heart-wrenching scene. Eric watched, feeling a mix of hope and helplessness as the mother bear worked tirelessly, pushing and pawing at the metal trap. Her determination was evident. She would lean back, then lunge forward, using her weight and strength, trying different angles and techniques. Despite her efforts, the trap remained unyielding. The mother bear paused, licking her cub's head in an attempt to soothe it, before resuming her desperate endeavor. As Eric watched the mother bear and her cub, he wondered where the trap had come from. This area was supposed to be a safe place for wildlife away from human threats. Chernobyl was largely empty of people meant for nature to recover after the nuclear disaster. Finding a trap here was a troubling sign that not all human activities had stopped in this supposed sanctuary. Then Eric heard rustling in the bushes nearby. Could the rescue team be arriving? Through the drone camera, he saw figures moving towards the clearing, but they weren't the wildlife team. These were poachers armed with rifles and carrying more traps. Their cruel laughter filled the air as they got closer. 
Eric quickly adjusted the drone to capture clear images of the poachers and their equipment. Knowing these could help authorities catch them later, he called the wildlife management team urgently. Poachers are heading towards the bear and her cub. They're armed and dangerous. We need help right away. The mother bear sensed the danger and moved between her cub and the noise, ready to protect her baby. The cub, sensing its mother's tension, stopped crying and began. And to whine in fear, Eric felt a mix of helplessness and determination as he monitored from above. He knew the footage was vital for rescuing the cub and stopping the poachers. As the poachers approached, Eric had only seconds to act. The group spread out to surround the bears. One poacher aimed the tranquilizer gun at the mother bear. Another dragged the cage and a third carry bolt cutters for the trap. Without hesitation, Eric used the drone to distract the poachers. He flew a close over their heads, creating a buzzing noise that startled and confused them. The poachers looked up, shouting in anger as they were momentarily thrown off. Eric hoped this distraction would help keep the bears safe until help arrived. A tense standoff ensued with Eric and the poachers locked in a battle of wills. Through this unusual confrontation, the mother bear watched cautiously, her protective instincts heightened by the presence of the armed men. Just as the situation seemed to reach a boiling point, one of the poachers, flustered by the persistent drone, raised his rifle and fired a shot at it. The gunshot echoed loudly through the forest, startling everyone, including the bears, realizing that gunfire would likely attract attention from other animals in the forest, as well as the authorities. The leader of the poachers shouted frantic orders, and the group quickly scattered into the dense underbrush. Within moments, the only signs of their presence were the sounds of snapping toises and rustling leaves as they disappeared into the forest. Although relieved, Eric kept the drone hovering, recording the last glimpses of the retreating poachers. He was thankful that his unconventional intervention had helped avert a direct confrontation and possible harm to the bears. Soon, the rumble of approaching vehicles broke the tense silence in the Chernobyl forest. The rescue team had arrived quickly exiting their trucks and assessing the situation. The team leader approached the area where Eric was controlling the drone and nodded in understanding as Eric filled him in on the details. The terrain was the primary obstacle. The thick underbrush and uneven ground made it difficult for the rescue vehicles to get close to the trap, and the presence of the mother bear added another layer of complexity to the rescue operation. The team set up additional ropes and tools, coordinating their efforts to carefully approach the bear cub without startling the protective mother. They brought in a tranquilizer gun to safely sedate the mother bear, ensuring both her safety and the safety of the team. This would also prevent her from interfering with the rescue of her cub. The team also prepared specialized equipment to carefully dismantle the trap that held the cub, Despite their expertise and equipment, the team struggled with the dense foliage that hid the trap. The thick underbrush made it hard to reach the cub, and its distressing cries increased their urgency. Eric, watching from above with his drone, saw their frustration and concern as their initial attempts failed. They decided to clear some underbrush and use a more precise tool to safely dismantle the trap. With a new plan, the team used heavy-duty shears to clear the area around the trap without disturbing the cub or its sedated mother. An expert in trap removal carefully unlocked the trap, using specialized tools and working slowly to avoid further harm. Another team member prepared a soft blanket to wrap the cub once it was freed. Finally, the trap was released with a soft click and the cub was quickly wrapped in the blanket and checked by veterinary staff, Eric continued to document the operation, knowing its importance for future training and awareness. As the team examined the cub, Dr. Maria noticed something unusual on its neck. A small metal tag was partially hidden in the dirt and matted fur. Curious and cautious, she called out to her colleagues, Hold on a moment, everyone. She gently cleaned the area around the tag. Once the dirt was cleared, she could see a series of numbers and a logo. Her eyes widened as she recognized the emblem of a renowned wildlife conservation organization. Wow! This is incredible! 
This bear is part of a big conservation project, she said, with a mix of excitement and surprise. It's tagged for a study that's been tracking bear populations in this area for over 10 years. She quickly called the conservation organization and after a brief wait got a call back with surprising and heartwarming news. This cub is part of an important study on wildlife recovery in areas affected by human abandonment and radiation. She told the rescue team they thought this cub might not survive in such a tough environment, the team gasped. They realized their rescue was more significant than they first thought. They had saved not just a life, but a vital part of a study on how wildlife recovers in Chernobyl. The conservationists explained further, this cub belongs to a family being watched closely for how well they adapt to these conditions. Losing this cub would have been a big setback for the study, which helps us understand how the Chernobyl disaster affected the ecosystem. As the tranquilizer wore off, the mother bear started to wake up. The team made sure she could see her cub was safe once fully awake. Her first instinct was to check on and nuzzle her cub. This touching reunion was captured by Eric, highlighting the emotional impact of their rescue. With the cub safe and the mother bear calm, the team packed up their gear. They decided to monitor the bears for a few more days to ensure they were both okay. Eric felt a deep sense of relief and satisfaction as they left. He had helped save these bears, and his footage would help raise awareness about the challenges wildlife faced, even in protected areas like Chernobyl in.